All right, so dudes, dudettes, check it out. We did something a couple of days ago with the owl, and now we're getting back on track here with these videos, considering Brian and I are basically putting our lives back together. If you look behind me right here, we got the old and trusty back together here. This is the this is the this is where all the magic happens. Most people, it's in their bedroom. For us, it's right here in this little tiny box. This is where all the magic happens. So we got the monitor, which was always fine. But we had to fix a piece in here because we constantly had problems with this web. He basically froze every time we were trying to put a video out. So anytime we like tried to stick to a specific schedule, this guy would shit out. So we finally were able to get the problem fixed and it was basically a cooling problem. And Brian knows how to put these things together because he built the damn thing and whatnot. So he's got his regular computer for his other stuff. And then we got our editing computer and then all of his artwork and everything he does. On that side of thing, it's just with this computer alone, so we finally got this bad boy back. So next week, we're gonna be jamming it out like nobody's business. So, figured we would run along with the same type of video we did the other day with the owl. So no fancy stuff, the fancy stuff will be back soon, so please, nobody worry. All of Brian's editing is not disappearing. We're just doing this a different way until we got this bad boy back. And then obviously, we have Father's Day, so let me first and foremost say to everybody out there, Happy Father's Day, mofos. Happy Father's Day to everybody out there. Whether you have regular children or little tiny babies like these, Happy Father's Day, mofo. And we're going to get into these guys in a second. So today's kind of a special episode deal. We're going to do the same thing like I said we did the other day. So we're just going to run this through. No special editing, no special anything. I'm going to try and watch my mouth. We got two out the other day. So I'm going to try and watch my mouth to the fullest here. We're going to see how it plays out because we can't edit it out. However, we have a special announcement. So a buddy of mine, Kurt. So we have Kurt, Colette, and Flavio. And those guys uh, put together twice a year what's called Crockfest. And a lot of you guys that know me already know about Crockfest. Now Crockfest is going to be happening next week. So it's Father's Day today. I say that it's not really Father's Day today. This is the day before. So we're doing this the day before just for you know continuity, if that even works in that sentence right there. I'm going to go ahead and say it does. So... Uh, you know, we're doing this the day before Father's Day. I got a phone call today from Kurt, and uh, essentially we're trying to get some people. We want some of our local people, all the people that usually show up to these Croc Fests will probably be out there. So you guys are going to be able to see a lot of uh, friendly faces. So it's going to be Kurt out there for sure. Flavio is going to be out there for sure. Uh, we're going to have Colette is going to be out there. And then you're going to have all of your academics, all of these nice people. Hopefully Kent Vleet will be out there. Hopefully we'll have have Joe Wazlewski, I'm sure, will be out there. It's going to be down south at the Everglades Alligator Farm, so you can go ahead and check it up. I'm not sure if the details are put up on the website, so we're not going to hyperlink the Croc Fest thing, but you can visit their website, um, which I believe still has the December uh, Christmas Croc Fest going on, so they're updating that now. But if you shoot over to their Instagram page, I think that you can get some updates. And we're going to update you again because Kurt's going to send me over some information. He's in a meeting right now. He has been since this morning. So I don't think he was able to send me the information because we were going to hyperlink that for you. But it is next week at the alligator farm that's way down south that's everglades alligator farm and homestead and it's going to be on june 25th and i'm pretty sure it's going to be running for probably from 12 in the afternoon until uh, maybe eight or nine at night depending on how things roll out now that may not be the specific information but the date is correct so that's june 25th that's next week i believe that's going to be on a saturday and I'm gonna go out there myself. I'm gonna drag Brian out there. I'm not sure if Brian's mom's gonna go or not, but we're gonna probably have Bianca out there. So there's gonna be a bunch of friends, families. Uh, it, we're all gonna have a good time. So if you haven't been to Everglades Alligator Farm, they do have uh, an interesting little property over there. They do have some gorgeous enclosures, some gorgeous setups. They have some different types of crocodiles, some different types of caimans, some you know, big old alligator farm back there. And then obviously it's for a good cause. I don't know which crocodilian species we're raising money for at this particular time again i haven't gotten the information yet but i'm going to keep you guys updated as soon as i get that information you guys will get that information but if you guys want to pre-buy tickets or anything like that i'm sure you can contact Rockfest on instagram and go ahead and talk to kurt colette or flavio somebody will answer your messages over there and ask you know any questions that you guys have to ask shoot those over to myself and or to kurt and colette themselves it would be easier to go to the Rockfest page just because i'm inundated with all the messages 
and all the comments from my YouTube and everything else that I have to get back into as the last couple of weeks who really haven't been able to engage in all my social media activities, if you will. So we got Crockfest. So I brought something special for a little mini episode to also tag up Crockfest. I got some babies here. And these guys, which you guys have seen multiple times before, are little baby American alligators. Now, they don't live in here, obviously. Uh, these guys live in waterland tubs right now until they get bigger. And these guys are at, of course, a buddy of mine's place. We got uh, my babysitter, Lewis. Lewis from Birds and Exotics of the World. Thank you very much. I appreciate you babysitting me for so long. Uh, it's been a wonderful wonderful babysitting experience. So he's been watching my homies for me until we get this new property. And uh, I think we got some good news coming, ladies and gentlemen. I do think that we're gonna have that property. Hopefully by the middle or end of next month, we will be moving in over there and things are gonna change dramatically because we are gonna go from zero to a thousand in seconds flat. So we're gonna have so much stuff to do. It's gonna bring everything to one property. Once everything is in one property, Brian and I no longer have to travel hours a day all over the place to try and get number one the animals taken care of and then number two any episodes and then remember if you guys go back you'll see brian and i are constantly helping mom out downstairs she's got babies downstairs it's spring so it's baby season brian's constantly feeding babies all that good stuff so it's been a pretty rough couple of months and the driving has basically taken a toll on all of us i don't know if you saw the video that i posted the other day looking a little rough i got some bags under my eyes yeah ladies and gentlemen i'm tired i got some comments on that yes I'm exhausted, I'm stressed to the max, I'm spread way too far thin and it's been for way too far long. So we're talking about months and months and months where I literally really haven't been able to operate on a normal schedule by any means. It's pretty much wake up that day and try and figure out what we're gonna do and make sure the animals are taken care of and then bounce around from place to place to make sure the animals are well taken care of. So today, let's do something a little bit different. Let's get on the lighter side of things and ignore all the bad stuff that's been going on for the past couple of months and then get into these little babies right here. So we have our little American alligators. I'm gonna bring out some other cousins of these guys. So we have three types of crocodilians. We have the alligators, which is only two species. We have the caiman, which I believe there's eight species, if I'm correct in saying that. I do believe I am correct in saying that. Then we have the crocodiles, which that one's a little bit more difficult because they constantly split up different crocodiles and subspecies. So a couple of years ago, it was 24. Then we were at 26. I believe now we're at 27 because the Nile crocodiles keep splitting up into north, south, east, west, this whole nine yards of things or whatever. So I believe there's 20, I wanna, I'm going to say safely 26 species of crocodiles, but two species of alligators, eight species of caiman, 26 or 27 or 24, somewhere around there, species of crocodilian or crocodiles, the actual crocodiles, but they're all considered crocodilians. But I'm going to bring out these guys' cousins and the, the family that these guys are in, the alligators, are in the same family of the caiman. So the caiman and the alligators have this, they share the same family, not the same genus, they're not the same species in any way, shape or form, but crocodiles are separated from the alligators and the caiman, which I thought was pretty interesting digging into this years ago. Now, this is information that's been locked in my brain for a long time and I constantly work with these species probably more than anything else, aside from the primates and all that good stuff. So it gets locked in there pretty good. So I'm gonna go off the best of my ability from the memory and recollection that I have. But we have these guys in the same family as the caiman and the crocodiles are separated in a family of their own but they are all related in the fact that they are all crocodilians now we have the american alligators down here and here in america like we've said in other episodes we're the only place in the world that have american alligators and american crocodiles living in the same area never any, anywhere else in the world will you see alligators and crocodiles cohabitating in the same area these guys do so we have the american crocodile american alligator you also have the chinese alligator the chinese alligator is extremely extremely endangered. I believe there's a couple hundred left in the wild, if that, and those guys don't get much longer than four feet. Now, I want you to pay attention closely to something about these two guys. These two little guys I haven't uh, spent much time with. They've been over at Lewis's house, and I want you to check out the disposition of an alligator. A lot of people think that alligators are extremely aggressive all the time. These guys were a little bit wiggly when I got them out. None of them opened their mouth. 
None of them tried to bite me. These guys have not been handled much. They just know people. They are very intelligent, so they figure out we're the ones that feed them. We're not here to hurt them. So the only time that they will bite, and they did today, that little thing right there is from this guy right here. And that wasn't a bite because he was trying to bite. It was a bite because I'm hand feeding him pinkies, which it's time to start using tongs. So he wasn't biting to bite. He was biting to get some food. But I want you guys to check out the disposition, uh, disposition on these guys because what I'm about to bring out next, their cousins, the disposition is a little bit different and there's a reason that they're not sitting out here with us right now and I'll explain that in a second but a few little tiny facts for you guys for anybody that's new to the channel or anybody that doesn't know anything about the alligators that we have here in Florida that we're so riddled with here in the state we have probably two million plus alligators in this state alone the alligator ranges from the southern tip of Florida all the way over to Texas and then back across North Carolina and then straight back down to Florida, over 5 million alligators are in existence. Now these guys were almost hunted to extinction and I say that, but I'm gonna generalize that a little bit because in the early 50s, 60s, 70s, these guys in, the, in Florida, the numbers got low. So we got down to about, I wanna say 100,000 and then they cut off the hunting altogether. And then even now you have to have a lottery that you win to be able to hunt alligators out there. It is 100% illegal to feed an alligator in the wild. It's 100% illegal to do anything with an alligator in the wild. They call it molestation of wildlife, not in the terms that you sick fools are thinking of. We're not molesting alligators in that sense. The truest sense of the word, if you look up molestation in the dictionary, it's basically saying that anything that you do that changes the behavior of this animal in its natural environment will be considered molestation of animals. Not saying that you're sexually abusing the animals. We're not gonna go there. That's not a thing. I'm not even gonna joke about that. But it's basically, if you disturb these animals in the wild, if they have to run away from you, or if they're disturbed in any way, technically you are, uh, in accordance to the law, molest uh, molestating. Uh, you're, you're molesting the damn wildlife. That's what's happening. So please, ladies and gentlemen, for the sake of the alligators, if you ever see an alligator in the wild, if you're from Florida, don't feed them. Don't interact with them. You see the disposition. They're extremely smart. Once you feed them once, they lose their fear of people. And then usually what ends up happening is towards the end of it, what's going to happen is those animals will be deemed a nuisance and 90% of the time they will be shot and killed on the spot or they'll be caught with a baited hook and they have to sit with a hook in their gut overnight while they're tied to a pole until somebody comes in the morning and then puts a little boomstick to the top of their head right there and slams the brain and out goes the alligator and the reason for that is very simple anybody makes a phone call to the state says they're afraid of an alligator in their backyard and mind you two million in the state that means any body of water here in florida there's a solid chance whether it's man-made or a natural pond or a natural water system or like i said man-made it doesn't make a difference there's a solid chance that you'll have alligators in it now alligators can go after dogs they can go after cats however it's more likely for that to happen when somebody's feeding those alligators in a population where there's people around because alligators aren't stupid they will search for places that's nice and quiet but if they do get used to people then they'll start hanging around fishing docks things like that because they're used to getting fed but as you can see these guys haven't moved at all they truly don't care about what's going on right now they're happy they got some food in their bellies they're ready to go back home they know they're going to be safe they know we're not here to hurt them and even if i put my fingers even around their mouth or in their face they're not striking they don't even make the attempt to strike just because these guys oh you're gonna prove me wrong you gonna prove me wrong? no you're not gonna prove me wrong of course not you probably just got scared so these guys were interesting because these guys hatched at a time that they were not supposed to hatch so usually these guys are going to hatch in about i'm going to say september august because the breeding season happens right after spring into summer and then those guys are going to lay their eggs it's a 60 day waiting period before those eggs hatch so when these were found on the seminal tribe of florida these came from the seminal tribe of florida uh they were found in february so found in february in in the middle of basically winter at this size means as these guys were hatchlings because this is a hatchling size alligator so they're no more than a couple of months old which means that the season was extremely irregular when we removed some alligators that's what i got master blaster that episode that you guys saw this was part of that whole thing over with master blaster now we're going to move from the alligators i'm going to show you guys their cousins real quick and then we are going to move on 
to close up with a little bit more about Crockfest, and then we're gonna get back next week to the regular editing, the regular fancy stuff that we do with Brian. We got a new drone. Well, when I say we, Brian got a new drone that we're gonna be trying out, so that's gonna be some extreme footage that we're gonna have there. It's gonna be some interesting stuff, but let me go get their cousins. I'll be right back. Boom. All right, so now I have some cousins of these guys. So I have two different types of caimans that I'm gonna teach you about. Now, caimans in general are, let me just say, how can I say this respectfully to the animal? I love caimans to death. They're a lot of fun, gorgeous animals, especially when you get to like black caimans, which unfortunately enough, those guys I don't think will ever have the pleasure of owning. However, uh, these guys are pretty common. A lot of people like to get these species and this, I think we'll do an entire episode on these guys when we get back into the whole reptiles and the keeping and the care of like intermediate, beginner and expert level because this is 100% an expert level care of reptile. And the reason being is like, they don't get very big. So this species, right here and this species right here a lot of people call both of them dwarf caiman that's not true this is a dwarf caiman this is a smooth front caiman the smooth front caiman can reach about six feet the dwarf caimans tend to stay about four five foot is a really really big dwarf caiman and i have seen them that size but they stay smaller so a lot of people in a lot of the northern states and even in the state of florida want to get these guys why because they think it's going to be a small and easily managed animal but I'm gonna show you guys something, and I buried these guys under the bed for good reason. Um, these guys are also at my buddy Lewis's place right now. He's watching these for me. But a common thing for these guys is they are so extremely aggressive, and their disposition is so extremely aggressive, you would literally have to sit with these guys all day long. Now remember, the same amount of time that has been spent with these guys has been spent with these guys. And you're gonna see a major difference right now. So we have the alligators, and then we have these two different types of caiman, which I'm gonna get into in a second. Now, you're going to see something a little bit different. Now, the problem with these guys, and something that I'm also very careful about, and the reason I had them stuffed under the bed, is because if they see anything, they tend to jump at everything. Mouth is always open. They're always on guard. Extremely aggressive. I hate to say that about any animal, but all caimans tend to be extremely aggressive. When I say aggressive, I mean they will chase you out of an enclosure. I think on the spectrum, the broad snout caiman would probably be the chillest of all the caiman, but these two particular species, are probably the most angry sons of bitches you could ever possibly imagine that and the, spe the spectacle caiman is not very good itself there's also the, the brown caiman which is also a spectacle caiman um, i don't know if they separated those species and a subspecies yet but it is technically the same caiman now what we have here is a true dwarf caiman so this is pa uh, paleosuchus palpabrosus which is, is the scientific name that's the latin name for these guys paleosuchus palpabrosus i'll say that one more time so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put my hand in here and this those is most like yep there we go. he's gonna immediately attack the hand he's gonna bite all over the place i'm gonna try and pick him up now what i want to do and this uh oftentimes what you'll see is people will go around and they'll snag him as quickly as they can behind the neck I prefer not to do that because it's not going to build any trust between me and this animal. And eventually, once we get the property and these guys come home, we don't want the animals to be extremely aggressive. If it happens, it happens. I'll deal with it at that point. But for me, what I like to do is like I'll let him do his little thing and he can get angry all he wants and he can bite all he wants. Right now, when he gets a little bigger, we'll be a little bit more careful. Not the nubby. Don't bite the nubby, bro, bro. But I'll try and be extremely sweet with him and go very slow and soft underneath. And I'll try and put no restraint on the animal whatsoever. You're gonna hear him start calling here in a second. And the reason being is that if I put no restraint on this animal, this animal is less threatened. Why? Because something's not grabbing onto the back of his neck aggressively where he thinks he has to protect himself. Now, obviously you can see his mouth is wide open. He is 100% pissed off. He is in no way, shape or form happy. But if I continuously did this over time, day after day after day, there is a chance that this guy would tame down. Now I would never ever trust him with 100% of my life because it's still a crocodilian. Those are still alligators. We still don't trust any of these these guys with our lives because in no way shape or form even the tamest of tame alligators even like Blackie my little girl over there we still don't trust her fully because they are what they are but I want to show you guys something so we have the palpabrosis here this is the true dwarf caiman and he's never going to shut that mouth and the problem with these guys and another reason why I'm so calm and why I bury them under the bed is they have this little tiny skinny tail 
And oftentimes you'll see these guys with missing pieces of their tail. And people think, and it is true in the wild, the babies themselves will chew on their tails. And then where they live in stagnant ponds and stuff like that in South America, you will have little turtles and stuff bite their feetsies. They'll bite their little tails. So you'll see them with missing tails. But these guys themselves can whip into a circle, grab their tail with their mouth, and they don't realize that it's their tail and they will rip their tail right off. I've seen it happen a dozen times. All right, so I'm gonna show you what happens now when I put a little bit of restraint. He immediately starts calling. So now I'm holding the animal, he can't bite me, right? But you hear him calling. That call right there in the wild, that would be him calling for his mother. And that mother call is a call that you don't wanna hear. If you hear those crocodilians making that call, that means mom's not too far behind and she's gonna be rushing in to destroy whatever the hell is messing with her babies. So that call right there immediately comes as soon as I close my hand. Why? This animal is no longer comfortable. If I open up my hand again and give him a few seconds, he will chill out. So the whole thing for me to tame down these guys is basically to give the least amount of restraint possible and also be careful. And once he starts walking, I'll just go forward with another hand, forward with another hand, forward with another hand. But you can see him bleeding over there. It's not a bad bite, but they still do have them little teethers in there. You see them teethers are sharp as hell. It's not like the alligators. And these guys get medieval. So again, this is the palp. And I'm going to put him back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him back very slowly. And he's probably going to still try and whip around. I'm going to leave this open and I'm going to bring this guy out because I want to show you guys the easiest way to tell the difference. Now, these are even more of an asshole. And I hate to say that because I love them to death, but they really are a true asshole species of crocodilian. Now, I'm going to put my hand in there. He's going to immediately start his shit. Now, what I'm worried about is the swing. There's already the tiniest, tiniest piece of the tip of his tail missing there. Now, he came in like that, so I'm not too worried about it, but it could have been him that did it. Also, could have been one of his brothers and sisters if they were in together. So, this guy, you can see how extremely angry these guys are. Like, it's no joke. Like, this is non-stop all the time. There is a chance that you can tame them down. And to protect my nub, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from this side. Go ahead, you can bite, buddy. It's okay. And again, I'm going to go from the bottom. And I'm going to try and be very gentle with this guy. While he's got a tooth in my thumb. And then again, same thing. We're just trying to make it so that the animal is comfortable. But the biggest difference, easy bud, because I don't want you to fall. Here we go. Let's try and do it like this. Are you just going to be a, a douche canoe the whole time, bud? All right. So here we go. Two caiman that look extremely similar. Like for the but like the naked eye, it's really hard to tell. If you bring people came in, that's oftentimes it's extremely difficult for these two species, not every species that came in, the other came in, start to get very different in the look. I'm sorry, bud, I didn't mean to grab you, but I didn't want you to fall. And you see, if I grab again, same thing. If I go behind the neck and stuff like that, he's extremely uncomfortable at this point. He's going to start doing his call and stuff because they're extremely threatened. Why? I'm grabbing him. He doesn't know why I'm grabbing him. He doesn't know what I am. All he knows is that he feels like he's going to be eaten and attacked. But if I go back to giving him his own space, he still may whack me. He still may bite just like that. But eventually, there will be a time where they're going to get to the point where they're like, okay, this guy's not here to hurt me. And if it happens like that, great. Then we have a tame animal. If not, then we have an animal that we have to deal with that's a little bit angrier on the spectrum. And that's okay, too. But for me, I don't like to jump in and just grab him right behind the neck unless it's a big old beast because there is a chance that you could hurt an animal this small. So I'll take the hits before the animal has to take the hits. But real quick before we get done here, let me put this guy back in his box so he doesn't fall. But I want to show you guys the differences. Now, these guys are cohabitated. So we do put these guys in the same uh, waterland tub. It is a big ass waterland tub, so they have plenty of space to get away from each other. But I'm going to put these guys next to each other so you guys can see. Now, obviously, the dwarf is a little bit more chill than the trig. So both of them, though, again, are in the same family. I want to say family, but I feel like species and genus. Species, genus, species, genus. I'm going to have to look into this and I'll teach you guys a little bit more, but the family is going to be alligator to nay or something like that. I believe that's the family. And then when you break it down, and I could be wrong on this, so don't quote me on this, I could be wrong on this. When you break it down, you have Paleosuchus, which is going to be 
your man. How did I fucking forget all this? And there's an F bomb. And there's the F bomb. <laughs> I'm gonna break it down for you guys. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research, but basically they, they break it all down. It goes kingdom, phylum, and then it goes all the way down into family, suborder, and then it goes into species, subspecies, the whole nine yards. So the family of these guys with the alligators and the uh, caiman are all the same. But then you have Paleosuchus, which is both of these guys, and then you have Trigonatus, which is this one, and Paleosuchus, not Paleosuchus, Palpabrosus, which is this one. So Paleosuchus Trigonatus, Paleosuchus Palpabrosus. Yeah, it's a mouthful. So Paleosuchus would be, oh man, you know what? Break time, I have to look this up. First time I'm gonna look something up just because I have to know for myself. Oh, I feel so special today. Okay, so that's the first time I've ever had to stop and check what the hell I'm talking about. And the reason being is not, I mean, usually I'll just tell you to Google that shit, but that's something that I dug deep into for a long, long time, especially with all the reptiles that I was breeding. So for me to forget that type of thing, that was just kind of like egging at me. So the it is the same family, I was correct on that. And then you have the genus and then you have the species. So the genus, and let me explain this in a very wide wide spectrum here so you have uh, let's use some um, snakes okay so you have uh, a green tree python and then you have a carpet python right both of those are morelia 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 so you have morelia viridis and then morelia some other shit some other shit i don't know the other name but they're both morelia so they're both from the same genus the same genus but different species same thing with this he's the same genus of animal so you have paleosuchus and then you have the different species, which would then be your palpabrosis and your trigonatus. To break it down easy, this one's a dwarf that's basically called a curvier's dwarf caiman. This one's called the smooth dwarf front caiman. Now, if you look at these guys, one's got a darker head, but that doesn't always ring true. So I've seen these that look a lot like these. And the easiest way to tell is not the faces, it's not the heads, even though these guys look completely different in color and shape of the head. A a lot of times these guys come in with a dark black head as well especially depending on temperature how you're keeping them the whole nine yards if they're stressed they'll black out they'll get lighter the whole nine yards but if you take a look at these guys real close and this is where we're going to end this episode if you look at the scalation so that's the best way to do it so if you look at the scoots on this guy right here the Corvier's dwarf caiman so you can see it's a very smooth set of scoots and I forget the count on the scoots, but you can actually count how many scoots they have. That helps out as well. But if you look at the tail as well, and the bottom uh, or the back of this guy, it's gonna be very smooth all the way down. If you look at the trig, starting from the neck, the nuclear scoots right there, you're gonna see nucule, nucule, nucule. God bless, I hate that word. Nucleal scutes on the neck right there all the way down. It's very dinosaur looking. So you're looking at a very jagged, jagged set of scutes. The scutes are kind of going all over the place. This is a very clean mapped out animal. Looks like somebody basically went through and placed one scoot next to the other one and very carefully did it. And then it looks like as if this one was done by a three-year-old who was like, fuck it, let's do it. Ba -ba 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 -ba. There's a bunch of scoots for you. And I actually do like the look of this better because they're a little bit more dinosaur-y. I know, big guy, I'm sorry. We're almost done here. I'm gonna stop bothering you, I promise. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. One day we're gonna be friends. But this is gonna be some of the stuff that you guys are gonna see at the new property. We're gonna show you how to set these guys up. And I'm super excited for this. I'm so excited for this property because I actually get to show you guys how to set up baby crocodilians, how simple I use, like the simple method that I use when you guys see what I do and how I grow these things. It's this, it's literally the most simple setup that you could possibly ever imagine. I've never had any issues with it because it's kiss, keep it simple, stupid. And that works out perfectly for these guys. Couldn't say that like, better in any way, shape, or form. So I'm very excited to show you guys how we set all these guys up. Come back here, you little squirt. You little squirt, let's close these guys up. And then I'm gonna put these guys back under the bed so they don't chew any tails off, especially you, you little devil. 
So I'm super excited, ladies and gentlemen. The world is about to change here for us, for me and Brian. We're gonna get to show you from start to finish how to build a better reptile room, what to pay attention to your reptile room, how to set up everything from, so I wanted to do this when I got the seed shipment from the feds and we had all those reptiles, but I wasn't able to do it. It was just me working 20 hours a day taking care of reptiles. Now I actually get to show you from start to finish how I pay attention to where I'm gonna place things, where I'm gonna keep reptiles, why I'm keeping those reptiles in certain rooms and other reptiles in other rooms. And it goes into this whole ordeal of like actually logistically making sure that all of your animals are set up correctly so that you can give them the proper environment and proper husbandry and care so that all your animals thrive. Because it's very difficult with a large collection to put everything in one room, especially coming from all different parts of the world and trying to shove everything in one room or two rooms, three rooms or whatever. You're going to have to separate things as often like a lot of my friends do. They'll separate rooms, they'll separate things and they put different things in different places due to the fact of where they come from, what kind of agricultural zoning they have, where they come from, the climate, the whole nine yards. Everything plays a part, and I'm super excited to show you guys how I get into it, how I figure out how I'm going to set these things up, how I figure out which room I'm going to use for what, and we're going to get deep into this stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun, I think, for everybody. And then remember, dudes, Crock Fest. June 25th. That's going to be next week. If you guys want to come see us, I'll be out there probably for the better part of the time. I might leave a little bit early just because of everything we got going on, but I am going to go and support my guys out there. So definitely check us out. I'll keep you posted. So stay tuned to my Instagram, stay tuned to the uh, YouTubes here. And then again, thanks to all the Patreons and everybody out there. But if anybody gets a chance next week, June 25th, Crock Fest. Boom.